standard solution it's a solution of known concentration right so 2.1 uh, we're supposed to define a standard solution uh, it is a solution of known concentration right that's how far the definition goes and then 2.2 2, the question is saying that uh, elena want to prepare a standard solution of oxalic acid dehydrate right uh, we have a chemical formula there of concentration 0.1 moles per decimeter cube in a 250 centimeter cube flask the question says uh, let's perform a suitable calculation to find out the mass of oxalic acid dehydrate that she has to weigh out accurately to make a solution of 0.1 moles per decimeter cube right so we have uh, the concentration that right? it is equals to 0.1 uh, moles per decimeter cube and we also have the volume which is equals to 250 centimeter cube right so we can just divide that by a thousand so that our unit can now be decimeter cube right and what we're looking for is the mass to achieve a concentration of 0.1 moles per decimeter cube if the volume is 250 centimeter cube well you can use the mass to calculate the number of moles right and then from there on you can say concentration is equals to number of moles divided by fully right or you can just say that the concentration is equals to the mass divided by the molar mass multiplied by the volume this also holds so what is our concentration our concentration is 0 0.1 uh being equals to uh, the mass it's what we are interested in and then divided by the molar mass of our chemical compound and multiply by the volume right so the difficult thing i realize uh, when a lot of people solve these kind of questions is actually calculating the molar mass when we have something like this right so let me show you what you have to do here so obviously the most uh, molar mass of hydrogen is one right so h2 will give us uh q and then plus molar mass of carbon we have two carbons right so we're gonna have uh 12 is the molar mass of carbon so two carbons that's gonna be 24 so we have 24 and then plus oxygen the molar mass of oxygen is 16 right so if we have four then that we, that is going to be 64 so we're gonna have plus 64 and then the issue arises here with 2h2 oh this is where we lose a lot of people so we have two hydrogen atoms multiplied by two that will be plus four and then we have uh, one oxygen atom multiplied by two so that will be plus 32 right this is how you're supposed to write the molar mass of uh, that oxalic acid dehydrate and then multiply by the volume which is now 0 0.25 right so now it's just a matter of cross multiplying so that we can get our mass right and then if you do that you're gonna get a mass which is equals to 3.15 grams right this molar mass here is supposed to give you 110 26 if you get anything else other than that you're probably doing something wrong right so that is uh 2.2 let's look at uh 2.3 uh let's suggest a suitable indicator that uh, the lemma can use for the titration of the standard oxalic acid against sodium hydroxide solution right so 2.3 2.3 so let, let me just give you the basics right so what are the basics so if you have a weak acid weak acid plus uh let's say strong base weak acid plus strong base which indicator do you need when you have a weak acid and a strong base phenol -taline, right so we have phenol phenol Talin, phenol talin, right so every time when you have a weak acid and a strong base the resulting ph will be basic right and then the indicator to use is phenol talin. and then uh, what if you have a strong acid a strong acid and a weak base strong acid and a weak 
this right here you would need to use a methyl orange so here we have methyl orange right and then what if you have a strong acid and a strong base or you have a weak acid and a weak base then you would use bromothymol blue right so when the ph is about neutral we use bromothymol blue when the ph is acidic we use methyl orange and then when the ph is basic we in, we use phenolphthalein right so that is 2.3 so in our case we have oxalic acid right we have oxalic acid which is weak and we have sodium hydroxide right we have naoh which is a strong base so our resulting pa here would be basic right and then as a result we would use phenolphthalein right so the answer to 2.3 is actually phenolphthalein well we're gonna use that indicator because we have a weak acid and a strong base and then uh 2.4 2.4 uh, motivate your answer in question 2.3 we have a weak acid and a strong base right the resulting ph will be greater than seven and then if that is the case we need to use phenolphthalein right and then uh 2.5 2.5 the neutralization reaction that that takes place between oxalic acid and sodium hydroxide is given below there we have our equation right uh, I think here we're supposed to have double arrows, right? There we go. And then, if exactly 22 centimeter cube of the sodium hydroxide solution was required to neutralize 25 centimeter cube of oxalic acid, um, calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution, right? So, like I've mentioned in previous videos, if you have neutralization, you can easily say that. Uh, the number of moles of acid divided by the number of moles of base is equal to the concentration of acid volume of acid divided by the concentration of the base multiplied by the volume of the base right so here even if you don't have the number of moles of the acid in the base you can use the balancing coefficient right because if it is indeed a neutralization reaction then the number of moles of acid to the number of moles of base shall be in relation in proportion to the balancing coefficient right so we have na and nb because we can just use the balancing coefficient what else do we have we have the concentration of the acid we calculated it in actually we didn't calculate it it was given to us as 0.1 moles per decimeter cube and then we also have the volume of the acid it is 250 centimeter cube right we have the volume of the base and we're looking for the concentration of the base so it is easy to see now that we have all our variables we just need to substitute so the balancing coefficient of the acid is one as we can see here well as we cannot see but we know that there is one there so we're gonna have one divided by the number of moles of base which is two the balancing coefficient so when i have two them being equal to the concentration of acid is said to be 0 0.1 and the volume of the acid uh, the volume of the acid that was used of that 250 centimeter cube right only 25 centimeter cube was used so that's what we have to use here so we have 25 and then divided by the concentration of the base multiply by the volume of the base uh we are given a volume of 22 centimeter cube right so we're gonna have uh 22 yeah you might be asking yourself why are we not converting to decimeter cube right because if you convert to decimeter cube then you're dividing the numerator by a thousand and the denominator by a thousand also right it doesn't really do anything so every time when you have the a ratio of the volumes you can just leave it as it is right it doesn't matter whether you convert it to decimeter cube or you don't right so now we are done uh, with our substituting we just need to cross multiply and then let's go ahead and do that we're gonna have cb uh, multiply by 22 been equals to 2 multiply by 0 0.1 multiply by 25 and then cb is gonna be equals to 2 actually let's just divide both sides by 22 as it is so we're gonna divide both sides by 22 right and then uh, the concentration of the base will be equals to 
0 0.23 moles per decimeter cube.